Is Wei destructive? Yeah, we believe so. It defines the characteristics of the boat, the fuel efficiency, the top speed, the handling, the ride comfort. We try and make our boats as light as possible and we work really, really hard to achieve this. Goldfish chooses vacuum infusion on 90% of our parts for two main reasons. It's strength and weight. With regards to efficiency, weight is alpha omega and the quicker you'll go in, you need a strong product. With traditional layup, you have uh, glass fiber mats, open barrels of resin, and you're pushing the resin into the mats. It's very hard to get out all of the air, and you use a lot of excess resin. So you get weaknesses in the construction, and you get excess weight. Vacuum infusion is a closed environment where you have the mats, and then you have a bag that seals everything. You pull a vacuum and then you suck in the resin. The pressure of the bag against what is packed inside the bag presses out any excess. And because of the vacuum, there's no air in the construction. So the result is a much lighter, stronger construction, which is what we need for our products. Resin is a liquid, two component glue. The glass fiber mats, if you have a carbon boat, the mats, they're flexible like a textile, but when they are impregnated with resin and that sets, it becomes a stiff construction. And what's beautiful about this is because it is in textile form, when you pack it into the molds, we can achieve very consistent, beautifully curved products that are consistent from time to time. We use cool materials on all of our boats. There's quite a lot of people that don't use it on the hull. We choose to use cool material in our hulls. Any large surface that needs to be rigid, we use core materials. Core materials are foam board. So we use uh, different thicknesses and different densities of core material, depending on where in the boat and what the needs are, if it's stiffness, strength, impact resistance. Here there's no core material foam, so I can actually deform this. But this part we just cut away because there's coming a hatch. But for example here, it's very rigid because this is going to be a supporting surface for the deck structure. What we're looking at here is a typical construction. So you have the mold here, which defines the shape, and then you spray on a gel coat. And then you'll put a certain amount of fiberglass layers over that. And then you have the foam board, the core material here. And then on the outside again, so the back side, you have uh, a certain amount of glass fiber layers. And what you can see here actually is the perforations in the foam board, which means that when you use vacuum infusion, the resin can switch between sides and it makes sure that you get resin everywhere so that you have the strongest construction possible. The main benefits of having a lighter construction is you reduce the weight globally. You're not just reducing the weight there or there. It's the whole construction that you're making lighter. And we achieve a light construction by having all these loose pieces that are super optimized. And when you glue them all together, it becomes a very, very stiff construction. So that means we're able to make a stiff product with very low weight. And our experience is this makes a lot better sea keeping boat. The construction we're looking at here is it, a recipe. This is done in house from the same people that are doing the design, the construction drawings. This team has a lot of years of experience in both mold making, hand layup, vacuum infusion. This recipe, as we call it, is, it is like your grandma's cookie recipe. It is the most valuable document we have in the company. And we adjust it all the time. So when we made one boat, if we feel that one area was a little bit too flexy, we'll take action. If we feel it was overkill, we'll take action because if you're putting in too many materials, then you're adding weight and that's going to go out over the efficiency, fuel usage, top speed. So we're constantly trying to refine and get it to be absolutely spot on. Okay, but there's, you have weight. What, what can you do about it? The, we can't make a boat that weighs nothing. So now I'm going to explain a little bit about the center gravity. There's a point on the boat, which on this one is around here in the middle, where the boat is balanced. If you was to balance the boat on a log, the sort of tipping point where it sort of easily go up and down. Uh, so a good example is the fuel. If you have a thousand liters of fuel, 
if that was placed at the front of the boat, as the fuel gets lower, you're gonna change the center of gravity of the boat because it's such a big variable mass. But we place, for example, the fuel tank right over the center of gravity so that when you tap down that mass, you're affecting the center of gravity very little. And it's not just in the length of the boat, you also have the height. So the higher up you place items on the boat, the more tippy it's gonna be. So when you turn, you're gonna have higher risks of capsizing. So we try and get the weight as low as possible. So it acts almost like a self-writing keel. This has benefits not only when you're turning, but when you're running side waves, for example, hitting waves at an angle, the boat is a lot more stable sideways. So the weight we can't do anything about, we just place it where we know it will have the best characteristics for the boat. If we're gonna compare an inboard and an outboard, an inboard you get further towards the longitudinal center gravity of the boat, which is positive and you get the weight lowered down. So that means it acts as like a self-writing mechanism. The lower you get the weight down to the keel, the more stable the boat's gonna be. So an inboard is actually very beneficial to have if you're thinking in terms of weight balance and sea keeping. Outboards, they are further back and higher up. So this, of course, has an effect on the stability. But when we design boats, we get, try to get the outboards as low down as possible to counteract the effect of having what would have been a higher center of gravity. When we design a boat, we try and make it like Lego. This boat weighs around 6,500 kilos and every kilo matters. When we're designing a boat, we place every component. We know how much it weighs where it should end up in the boat in terms of the weight distribution of the boat, the forces it's going to be experienced to. So you don't want, for example, equipment at the bow of the boat that isn't very durable because the distance it will travel when you're driving is a lot further than if you have the equipment at the back of the boat. And you need to ask yourself as well when you're configuring a boat, do I need this equipment? If you're not going to use it, then don't chose it. We want to maximize performance and efficiency. And if you want to be with that journey, you need to really be critical of what your needs are and make the right choices because that will really affect the characteristics of your boat.